Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. So, today we're going to take a look at some upcoming PlayStation 5 games that are incredibly exciting. Over the last couple of weeks, I put a list together for the Nintendo Switch and Xbox Series, so if you want to go check those out, definitely do so. But now, it's time to take a look at the PlayStation 5, and I think that it's got a truly stellar lineup of games for the rest of 2022, and then also 2023. You know, PlayStation has always kind of been known for their big exclusive games, and we have plenty of those peppered throughout this list alongside some other really exciting games as well. In fact, we have a grand total of 25 games to talk about today. Truly, I I've said this several times on the channel, but I mean, it is just such a great time to be a gamer. Just as a bit of a forewarning though, I really tried to focus on games that at least have a release window and have indicated that it will have a chance of releasing by the end of 2023. So games like Wolverine will not be on this list as we have no estimate as to when it will actually release. With that in mind though, we have a lot to go over today so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So to start this list off, I have SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake, and I know right away that might surprise some people out there. But this is a follow-up to SpongeBob Rehydrated, which is actually a fantastic 3D platformer. You might not expect it, but it actually is. And The Cosmic Shake is looking to be a worthy successor. There's several nods to the original with some of its mechanics and its animations, and it even has the sandboarding sections once again, but there's also plenty of new additions here in The Cosmic Shake as well. It actually kind of reminds me a little bit of a mix between Mario Galaxy and then Banjo-Kazooie, with SpongeBob changing his form in each level. But yes, if you are a fan of 3D platformers, then without a doubt, the Cosmic Shake is one that you and the whole family might want to pay attention to. Now, when you start to talk about next generation games with state-of-the-art visuals that truly impress, Black Myth Wukong is one of the first games that comes to my mind. This is an upcoming action RPG built using Unreal Engine 5 and is based on the Chinese novel Journey to the West. You can already see some of its culture bleed into its gameplay and design, which gives it a kind of a unique feel compared to a lot of games on the market that you see. It is currently being described as a Souls-like, so do expect some challenge with that. But if this game ends up playing as good as it looks, I mean, I mean it looks absolutely excellent, then we might be in for a fun time with Black Myth Wukong. Now, Atomic Heart, much like Wukong, is another game that truly impresses with just how much potential it has, if, if done right. I mean, I, I just love the look and world of this game, and graphically, it looks both unique as well as incredible. It is a new IP, however, so, I mean, you never really know, but the gameplay in Atomic Heart looks absolutely insane so far. It's a first-person shooter with RPG elements that takes place in the Soviet Union in an alternate 1955. As you can see, there's like these crazy looking robots, it has a lot of atmosphere to it, and some really cool abilities that makes for interesting gameplay. If anything, I'd say that Atomic Heart has a lot of potential to be a surprise hit when it eventually releases sometime in 2022. One genre that's had a bit of a resurgence as of late has been tactical RPGs. Fans of this genre are absolutely feasting right now, but one of the most exciting upcoming strategy RPGs is the new Square Enix IP, Diofield Chronicle. You can actually download a demo for this one right now, so if you want to go check that out yourself, definitely go do so. But it does put a new spin on things that really sets itself apart. The battles are actually done in real time, though when choosing commands, time will stop. It's a good mix of tactical-based gameplay and real-time combat. I think fans of more traditional JRPGs, though, like Final Fantasy, and then fans of strategy-based games will really enjoy the combination of mechanics in this game. Diofield Chronicle is set to release on September 22nd. Now, one trend that you might start to notice from this point forward is that Square Enix has a pretty good relationship with Sony right now, and that shows with Valkyrie Elysium launching as a PlayStation console exclusive. This is actually a new entry for the long-running Valkyrie profile franchise that started back in 1999, and actually this is the first time it's appeared on PlayStation since 2006. Don't worry though, Valkyrie Elysium can be played with no prior knowledge of the franchise with a completely standalone story. It, however, has been stated that it will mix its more classic gameplay elements with modern action RPG gameplay. Valkyrie Elysium is currently set to release on September 29th of this year, so Square Enix has actually a pretty busy September overall. 
For years, the Batman Arkham games from Rocksteady were kind of viewed as that bar for what makes a good superhero game. And now, Rocksteady is going to try to take that expertise over to the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. It is still set in the same Arkham universe that they previously established, but this time instead of playing as Batman, you'll instead play as super criminals that are tasked to take down the Justice League that are brainwashed. Ironically, it's up to these super criminals such as Harley Quinn, King Shark, Deadshot, and Captain Boomerang to save the day. You'll get to take their powers and explore an open world in its grand action adventure sometime in the first half of 2023. Now, for fans of single-player action games, Project Eve is a game that really stands out. It's a very pretty game set in a post-apocalyptic world where our protagonist Eve fights off a devastating invasion with fast-paced, fluid combat. It looks brutal, it looks grotesque, but also very smartly designed as well with some well-thought-out mechanics such as its burst gauge meter that builds with successive parries and evades. The developers have noted that it's been inspired by games like Nier Automata and God of War, which are some of the all-time great that's quite the inspiration to take, but I'd say based on its combat, you can also see some similarities with Bayonetta as well. Speaking of single-player action games, Team Ninja is no stranger to the genre with games like Neo and Ninja Gaiden, and they are set to release their newest game, being Wolong Fallen Dynasty in early 2023. Wo Long is set in historical fantasy China where the player will learn various martial arts styles and swordsmanship strategies to utilize the power within. We haven't really seen too much in the way of gameplay for Wo Long as of this video, but it is being described as a Souls-like and because, I mean, this is Team Ninja and they did such a great job with Neo, there, there's plenty of reason to believe that Wo Long will turn out to be yet another great Souls-like from them. Now, for fans of Atlas JRPGs, Soul Hackers 2 is right around the corner. Soul Hackers 2 is a supernatural turn-based RPG where you can summon demons to fight alongside you. It's actually a part of the Shin Megami Tensei and Persona franchise, which are legendary among fans of the genre, for, for good reason, by the way. Though this actually follows the Devil Summoner series, though don't worry, even though this technically is a sequel and everything, you won't have to have any prior knowledge of the series to enjoy Soul Hackers 2. It can be played as a completely standalone game and this one will be out very soon it is set to release on august 26. one of the more overlooked and just flat out better story driven single player experiences last generation was a plague tale it has an emotionally driven story where you play as two young kids running away from the inquisition and a rat plagued ridden world if you haven't already played it definitely go do so but if you have you'll understand exactly why its sequel, A Plague Tale Requiem, is just so exciting. It continues its gripping story and looks to expand on its already good stealth-based gameplay. They've given Amicia even more options to sneak around this time, and it looks like a legitimate, great stealth-based experience, which, I mean, we really don't get enough of these games, and yeah, I think A Plague Tale Requiem will definitely fill that void. Now, for the FGC and fighting game fans out there, we of course have to talk about a staple for the genre being Street Fighter. Street Fighter 6 has now officially been revealed, and it does look like a big step up from what we saw last generation. Capcom's doing some very interesting things this time around. The visuals so far look great with a more of a realistic approach, but also stylized at the same time. I really like its art style, especially with the effects that they're using in its combat, but the story also takes place in an open world-like environment. That's certainly a big change and it'll be very interesting to see how exactly that plays out when it releases next year in 2023. Now, there's been a lot of Star Wars games throughout the years, and there's actually several more in development, but Jedi Fallen Order sits among the very best entries the franchise has ever seen, and well, its sequel Jedi Survivor is on its way. Now, as of this moment, not too much is necessarily known about its gameplay, but it is set five years after the events of the first game where Cal will need to stay one step ahead of the Empire as he continues to feel the weight of being one of the last surviving Jedis in the galaxy. What I do know, though, is that this is being developed by Respawn Entertainment, which is an exceptional studio that's worked on games like Apex Legends and Titanfall, so definitely some high expectations in this one as it does release sometime in 2000. 23. Call of Duty has consistently been among the most popular franchises on a yearly basis since 2007, and the Modern Warfare subseries has been a fan favorite 
pretty much ever since. So it's, it's only fitting that Modern Warfare 2 The Reboot is one of the most anticipated 2022 releases. Modern Warfare 2 once again will bring back beloved characters such as Soap and Captain John Price. It does look to tell a story set in 2022, and as for the massively popular multiplayer, it has several new game modes including Knockout and then Prisoner Rescue, which seems awfully similar to Rainbow Six Siege. I actually like that personally, but it is set to release on October 28th, and then as for Warzone 2.0, it is also planned though as of this video, no definitive date as of yet. As I said earlier, Sony and Square Enix have been very cozy as of recent, and Forspoken is kind of a love child of that. Forspoken is a PlayStation console exclusive where you follow the journey of Frey, a young New Yorker that's been transported to the beautiful but cruel world of Athia. The premise sounds quite interesting on paper, but so too does its flashy, fast-paced action gameplay. It really looks like a lot of fun, and if you do recognize some similarities with something like Final Fantasy XV, well, there, there actually is a reason for that, as it does come from the same studio, Luminous. Here, though, we get to see their take on a brand new AAA IP when it releases on January 24th of 2023. For any fan of the Harry Potter franchise, they have got to be salivating over the very ambitious Hogwarts legacy. In many ways, this is a childhood dream as you get to live in the world of Hogwarts. That means instead of reading about it or instead of just witnessing parts of the school throughout its movies, instead, you get to live in Hogwarts yourself and explore its vast open world. It's a legitimate RPG where you create your own character and partake in this world as a student. Here, you'll get to go to class and study, you'll befriend various characters, explore the many secrets of its school, and yes, you'll even be able to travel outside of Hogwarts and test your wizarding skills. Sadly though, this has been delayed into 2023, where it will release on February 10th, but that's really not too much of a wait when you start to think about it, as I mean, fans have been dreaming about a game like this for well over a decade. Brutal, grotesque, atmospheric, and downright frightening is the only way that I can possibly describe Callisto Protocol. This is a spiritual successor to Dead Space coming from the Dead Space creator Glenn Schofield himself, and wow, it looks more than just a little worthy of a spiritual successor to say the least. Callisto Protocol, though, is set 300 years into the future at Black Iron Prison, a maximum security penitentiary located on Jupiter. As you might have guessed, something seriously went wrong as inmates begin to turn into monstrous creatures. After that, you'll then need to survive as you explore its spooky environment and uncover secrets hidden within Callisto. Seriously, you might need some courage to play through this one. It's almost kind of amusing that fans have been asking for a new Dead Space for nearly a decade. And now, not only do we get clips or protocol as I just talked about, but well, we actually get a Dead Space remake as well. Everything is just suddenly lining up for you Dead Space and horror fans out there. Dead Space, though, is often viewed as an all-time great sci-fi horror for its looming, creepy atmosphere and its unique take on third-person shooting. Headshots aren't the go-to in Dead Space like you see in other survival horrors, but instead, you have to be a little bit more strategic with its plasma cutter. You can either shoot a blast vertically or horizontally to dismember the necromorphs that hunt you down. The dark, closed corridors quickly make you feel claustrophobic, striking real fear with every small step that you take forward. And that will now more than likely be amplified with its new visuals that look to maximize its already seriously scary atmosphere. So this next one here has been a little bit more controversial, admittedly due to its pricing and just how many times it's, it's been re-released. But setting aside that controversy, The Last of Us Part 1, without a doubt, will be a very good game when it releases on September 2nd. The original, after all, is viewed as one of the all-time great single-player experiences ever made, and th there's a good reason for that. The zombie-esque world that Naughty Dog created is nothing short of exceptional, and that's only magnified when you take that journey with such beloved characters that are just so easy to relate to. It's a cruel and brutal world, and you, you will feel that as the two main characters fight to survive and strengthen their father-daughter-like bond. It's a truly memorable journey that you take with these characters, and The Last of Us Part 1 looks to be the definitive way to play through its heartfelt story thanks to its upgrade in visuals and more lifelike facial animations. 
Yeah, so by this point, you, you might start to notice that fans of horror games are eating very well over the next year or so, and that continues on with Alan Wake 2. This is the much requested sequel to the mysterious thriller that released back in 2010, which was such a great thriller about an author whose wife has suddenly gone missing, and he's seemingly living out the experience that he wrote in his own novel. The story itself is just so interesting and gripping, but it also ended on this huge cliffhanger that's left fans wanting more for, again, years and years. Well, here we are 12 long years later, and we're finally, finally getting a sequel where it'll hopefully get the ending that it truly deserves. The sequel, though, supposedly will lean even more into those horror-based elements, though, and I'm really interested to see how all that turns out. Now, there's certain franchises out there that kind of inspires and defines a genre of games. Games like Dark Souls and Souls Likes, you have Zelda and its gameplay, and then, of course, Diablo and dungeon-crawling action RPGs. Diablo is a prime example of what genre-defining really means. And well now, Diablo 4, the series' next mainline entry, looks to take things to the next level all while maintaining its addictive gameplay. Unlike previous entries, it's a completely open world game this time around with non-linear progression and exploration. It will feel different in how expansive its world and story structure is laid out, and it's also made quite a graphical jump with its new character models and environments. However, as you might expect when it comes to the Diablo franchise, the abilities and characters, they look absolutely insane. All in all though, Diablo 4 doesn't just look like a good sequel, but it also looks like it will be yet another release that fans play for years and years once it releases in 2023. After doing such a great job at remaking Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, and 3, now Capcom is set to remake debatably the franchise's most popular entry, Resident Evil 4. Again, you horror fans out there are eating very well right now, but just like their previous remakes, they're looking to have state-of-the-art visuals in Resident Evil 4, though I will say, it should probably be viewed as more of a reimagining. Don't go into this expecting an exact clone with no changes at all. They have indicated that there will be some differences, and last I heard, it will actually go more down the horror direction rather than action. I personally like that myself, though, as I do like when Resident Evil games are more scary. Now, that's just my opinion, but definitely something worth noting here. Either way, though, just based on Capcom's previous remakes, I easily expect Resident Evil 4 Remake to be one of the better releases next year in 2023. Final Fantasy is a very unique, long-running, beloved franchise. Unlike other series out there, its gameplay, its characters, its worlds, and stories all differ. But somehow, even though they change every time, it's for the most part been consistently good throughout its long history. And hopefully, that will once again be the case with Final Fantasy XVI. Though this time, this might actually be the franchise's biggest change yet, as it's going for more of this mature, dark title than we've seen in the past. In fact, it'll actually be the first mature-rated mainline Final Fantasy game ever, though I, I, I like that personally. I'm curious to see their take on a game like this, but what makes me even more confident about its 16th installment is that some of the talent that made Final Fantasy XIV so great is also working on Final Fantasy XVI. I mean, after they've done just such a great job with XIV, it makes me even more excited to see what they can do when they get their hands on a completely single-player game like this. It is set to release in the summer of 2023. Now, piggybacking off of what I just said about Final Fantasy XVI, well, interestingly enough, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the follow-up for the highly praised Final Fantasy VII Remake, is set to release shortly thereafter, being winter of 2023. And after playing the remake part one, I mean, I think I can speak for a lot of us here, I cannot wait to see what they do with Rebirth. The thing about the first part, though, was that it technically might only be a short portion of the original game, but it's expanded in a major way. Every character is so well fleshed out, and, and they're just so much more detailed than the original game, and it makes for an even more engrossing story and world. There are some changes which is expected to continue with Rebirth, but if you like good stories, if you like good characters and worlds, and if you like action JRPGs, then there's not many games as exciting as Rebirth. Both Rebirth and Final Fantasy XVI, though, are PlayStation 5 exclusives. And just as a bit of a bonus here, if you are a Final Fantasy fan, also keep an eye on Final Fantasy Crisis Core Reunion, which is set to release in December of 2022. Now, as I said earlier, Rocksteady for years have kind of set the bar for what makes a good superhero game. Or at least until Insomniac brought us Spider-Man. Insomniac Spider-Man was so good and just so successful that it's kind of reshaped what the game industry and fans think of these licensed IP. 
If you haven't already noticed, since that original Spider-Man game by Insomniac, suddenly we're getting a lot more of these licensed IP, especially from Disney. But nonetheless, a sequel for Spider-Man currently is expected for 2023, barring any type of delay. Now, unfortunately, as of this moment, they really haven't shown much in the way of gameplay as of yet, but we do know that Venom will play a part in some shape or form. And at the number one spot, I have none other than the much anticipated and often questioned release of God of War Ragnarok. Now, I've probably said this a hundred times on this channel, but I truly do believe this. I think the God of War 2018 was one of the most perfect single player experiences ever made. They did such a great job with its gameplay, its story, its characters, and the design of its world balancing out its more linear approach with an open world like Hub. Just from top to bottom, it was an absolutely fantastic game, and that's why there's so much excitement for its sequel. The characters will be a little older now, and we'll kind of see how that impacts the story, but once again, you'll get to play one of the most top tier hack and slash action games out there, and my full expectations is that this game will be yet another Game of the Year candidate when it releases on November 9th. Yeah, I mean, we're almost there, and hopefully it will be as good as the first game, because if it is, that means that we're about ready to play yet another masterpiece. Anyways, though, that's it for this video, but if I didn't mention a game that you're looking forward to, please let me know in the comments below so we can just all kind of discover it together. That's really what these videos are all about. Highlighting great games for you to play, and if you can highlight some, some games that I miss, then I'm all for it. Other than that, though, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe button below for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.